right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome back to the channel again. Thank y'all so much for coming over. Still back here? I said back here, like we left. Uh, with my little brothers, what time is it? 2.06. Where you see the clock? Oh, right there on the TV. Right there on the TV. Oh, right, right here, right here. yeah. 2.06 <laughs> in the morning, y'all. 2.06. And I'm about to show them Bill Burr, Black Friends, Clothes, and Harlem. <laughs> Again, I didn't want to do any music reactions because, you know, I only got this little speaker here. And I know the headphones are very important for the, for the songs I would want to show them. All right. Little Brother Quintel, Little Brother Laron, a.k.a. The Bodyguards. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, keep going, Griffin. Hit me up on Instagram, guys. Keep going, the Griffin. Club. There you go. There My you bad. Go. I forgot oh, to tell you guys in the past videos. And I'm at Wicked Nightmare eighty six. Is it zero eighty six or eighty six? You don't even know your damn thing. Damn. I'm at Wicked Nightmare eighty six or zero eighty six. I'm a little tipsy. Right now, a little tips. Just yeah. a little tips. So. They over here drinking. I ain't drinking because I'm driving home. But it's all good. So, again, <laughs> you guys, so y'all don't know who Bill Burr is at all? I don't know who Bill Burr is right now. I'm, I have no idea. Um, Closest. No, I don't know who Bill Burr. Just by face? Because he, he's like pretty popular. But Daryl didn't know who he was either. Cousin Daryl, but um, I know he was really good friends with Patrice O'Neill. You know Patrice O'Neill, but now y'all they probably too young to know. I, it's all good, but um, yeah, want them to check this out. So we ain't gonna waste no more time. Let's jump right into it. <laughs> Actually, I got a couple of uh, friends of uh, African persuasion. And uh, I gotta get rid of them, man. I gotta admit to you. I'm fine. I'm spending too much money on clothes hanging out with them. Because I gotta, like, fucking try to keep up with their wardrobe. Oh, shit. It's like every time they go out, they got all brand new shit on. Yeah, farm days. All brand new shit. So when I show up with my white version of brand new, which is, you know, I basically, I ironed the shit, right? I ironed it, right? It's good. It's new. They just start trashing me. I can't keep up with them, man. They got, like, fucking 58... Pairs of sneakers. Mm. Have I noticed that shit? Like yeah. every color fucking Timberland. And I don't give a shit what fucked up color their shirt is. They got a pair of shoes to match it and a hat. Oh man. <laughs> shit. It's like a rule or something. A rule. They're the worst. Even when you wear some new shit, there's like some sort of rule that you gotta like space out the amount of time within which like that you wear it. Cause God forbid you wear the same shirt within a 10 day period. One of them's gonna notice. All of a sudden, just look at you funny like this motherfucker's got the same shit he uh, had on last Tuesday. And then the whole crowd's like, oh shit! Yeah. Yeah. Then everybody just starts making fun of your fucking clothes. First, they do the math like, what was that, five days ago? Five days? This motherfucker got five shirts! Five shirts? <laughs> he got five shirts! They start breaking it down. Yo, his first shirt be saying Monday. Next shit be saying Tuesday. Oh, Yo, on the weekend, he ain't wearing no shirts. Oh, shit. He's got five <laughs> shirts. I'm dead. I'll tell you, it's actually funny. You know what? That's actually how, uh, how I judge black guys now. When I first came to the city, like, all black people scared me. Oh. No, I was like the typical white dude from, like, the suburbs. You know what I mean? I had no frame of reference, you know? So my only frame of reference with black people was, like, the, remember those early 90s gangster rap videos? Throw the fucking L.A. riots in there, man. It was fucking horrible PR. Oh, horrible PR. I'm watching the videos. So he's got nice cars. He's got all the women. And he's still fucking mad. <laughs> These tattoos are never happy. <laughs> oh, man. The clothes, the women. But after 10 years of living in the city, this is how I narrow it down. Whether black dude scares me or not. Black dudes with dirty sneakers scare the fucking shit out of me. <laughs> That's the last shit that they're gonna let go. The immediate shit that they have on. So I think, you know, if his sneakers are fucked up, that means his life is fucked up. 
Every time he leaves his building, the whole neighborhood, oh, shit! Everyone starts making fun of him. He's on the train in a bad mood. I kind of have this howdy doody, kind of mug me kind of face. Mug me, howdy. I'm not saying something's gonna happen. I'm just saying, I'm paying attention. I'm not yeah. saying nothing's gonna happen. So I've been seeing this girl recently, uh, black girl, right? She lives up in Harlem, you know? Gone out like three, four times, you know? First time we hung out, we hung out like the village area in New York, you know, which is sort of like a racially mixed area. So shit was cool, you know what I mean? Second time we hung out was more like Midtown, you know? Then the third time, she called me at like 3.30 in the morning and she wanted me to come up to her apartment, right? So it's 3.30 in the morning, she lives in Harlem, I look how I look, so it's a fucking situation. It's a situation because <laughs> you know the chill, right? Basically, a white dude feels comfortable up to about like 98th, 99th Street, you know what I'm saying? The second the streets start getting into like triple digits, like 100, 101st Street, start getting like a little asthma, I'm like, yeah, fuck, it's starting to get a little high up here. <laughs> you feel that little tightness in your chest? Can you feel that? Yeah, yeah. 106th Street, you're like leaning on shit, like, dude, where'd all the cats go? <laughs> no, there's no taxis up here. There no taxis. Dude, what's the bodega? The bodega. I don't know what that is. Let's get, get the fuck out of here. Oh, man. So, y'all remember when I reacted uh, to this? It's pretty good, bro. Hey. <laughs> When I reacted to this with my sister-in-law and cousin Daryl, and I was trying to explain to them, where we grew up, you find issues when the streets start to turn into numbers. Yeah. He's talking about numbers getting bigger. Yeah. It's when they turn into numbers. You go from like, you know, you got like... Century you to know. 101st, 102nd, 103rd. Yeah. Or, or you go down to how you have like... Melrose. Bingo. And then next thing you know, you in the fifties. Yeah. And it's like, oh shit. So that's yeah. equivalent to what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> that danger zone. I hear he you. He said, where all, the where all the cabs where go? The cabs Look at that from Vegas. It's chest to asthma. Yeah. Yeah, it'll start getting dark. No more street lights. It get crazy. Here we go. <laughs> How come there's no taxis up here? <laughs> Dude, what's the bodega? Oh, so I'm praying to God she's gonna tell me to take the subway, get off at like 105th Street, 103rd, you know, which is like the first stop in Harlem where I can still look over my shoulder and see like all the white people like disappearing over the horizon, you know? But she goes, no man, you wanna get on the Uptown 2 3 train, you wanna get off at 125th Street. I'm like, God, fuck, 125th Street! <laughs> So, at this point, I'm really trying to hide like the bitchy tone that's starting to creep into my voice, you know? And I'm trying to ask for really specific directions for when I get up there, because I want to know exactly where I'm going. So she starts naming the streets I have to go down, and every other street up there is named after like a black leader, you know? She's like, make a left on Adam Clayton, take a right on Frederick Douglass, I'm like, God, fuck Adam Clayton! <laughs> Did he kill a bunch of white people during the slave revolt? Oh. Dude, I ain't going up there till I know what Adam Clayton did. Fuck oh, this shit. Man. So at this point, I'm really having a battle with myself. Because I'm thinking I can't do this, right? I'm like, I can't do this, but my dick's going, no, come on, man, we can do this, all right? <laughs> Just relax. Pull yourself together and get on the goddamn train, right? So as always, I listen to my dick. <laughs> oh yeah, I get on the train. By the time I get up there, it's like five or four in the morning, right? I'm staying on like Malcolm X and like Danny Glover or some shit, right? Oh, God. <laughs> I don't even know where the hell I'm at. But I see the street, I want to go up, I want to go up St. Nick. I can literally see her apartment building. But there's like five or six black dudes standing right on the corner, right where I want to walk by. So I'm like, fuck! <laughs> I thought I was on like some reality show at that point, like some sort of like white guy survivor. He was ridiculous. White guy survivor. So I'm thinking I gotta walk right by these guys, right? You know what's funny? I think that they were actually more surprised to see me than I was scared, you know? And I was really, really scared, you know? But I'm also really, really white, you know? Like shockingly Caucasian. You know what I mean? Like if you're not ready for me, I can like surprise you. Oh, oh man. No, 
especially if you live up there. You've probably seen a white person for hours, possibly days. So when I show up, it's almost like magical, like a leprechaun came out of nowhere, you know? <laughs> Felt like I should have had like a little pot of gold, oh, man. like a rainbow behind me. Top of the morning to you, latte. <laughs> kind of dance my way past them. But it's been going all right, you know? Once I get in her apartment, I'm fine, you know? I relax, sit down, you know, watch a hip-hop countdown. Mm, hip-hop countdown, Pretend like I know the groups, you know what I mean? The countdown. It's just getting there that's a fucking pain in the ass. But you know, I don't get mad at it, because I figure, you know, black dudes gotta go through the same shit, though, right? When you go out to the suburbs, go fuck a white girl, right? <laughs> just that same awful feeling. Or just leaving your people behind, you know, just less and less of you as you're fucking driving out there. Probably start off lean and you're all fucking cool. Mm. 20 minutes in, you're driving like 10 and 2, the radio's out. Like, dude, I don't like this shit. I don't like this shit at all. There's too much grass, I don't see any rims. This is fucked up. None of the windows are tinted. I can clearly see white people in every car. This is fucked up. Listen, you guys were awesome. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you. Thank you very much. Oh, Good delivery. Good stuff, man. He was on point. Hey, Def Con Me Jam. Yeah. That was good stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hold on. I got it. Um, I was already getting ready to start the next one I want to show y'all. But, man, Bill Burr, funny, man. Yeah, and he be spitting so many facts. Mm -hmm. It was it was so when I first seen this man I was like God this is so accurate man how accurate was he? Yeah, he's on point. Like, like especially when he reversed it because <laughs> like you gotta remember remember I used to live in L.A. Mm -hmm. and when I met Adri and I used to drive to Chino Hills I was like I literally would get out there I'm like damn. Where's the graffiti? I, I was like, ain't no graffiti, no nothing out here. And it's crazy, and it's like, it's crazy, it was like 16, 17 years ago, and you had called me, you tell me you'd be on the way, and yeah. like, yeah, bro, and you no sirens, no police sirens, nothing. Traffic get better, everything just gets smoother, and just comfortable, man, you know. Happy. See, if you know, you know. If, if you haven't experienced anything like what he's talking about, you really can't, like, you can, it's hard to understand, but he, he, especially when he reversed it at the end, but it's, it's, it's facts, like what he's talking about, man. Mm -hmm. Especially like if you, you grow up in some type of neighborhood where it's, you know, kind of rough and then you mm -hmm. go somewhere else, you're just like kind of blown away. But, um, <laughs> I got another one for, to show y'all from him titled. Some people need lotion. <laughs> Y'all still up? Need it's lotion. early. Some people you still need up? Lotion. Boy, you still up? Yeah, yeah. Some people need lotion. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, Y'all want to add anything before we start the next one? That's good stuff. Dude got great, great stage presence. Good character, man. I'm glad you showed me this dude. I'm definitely telling my friends, other people about him. And you know what? I said the same thing about Daryl, too. I said, it's crazy, like, how I was, like, shocked that y'all don't know who he is. Is how, when I do music reactions, people don't know. They be like, you don't know who such and such is? And I'm like, no, I never heard mm -hmm. of him. But, hey, it is what it is. It All, right. All right. So, we'll be right back, you guys. So, stay tuned. Peace out.